Hi, welcome to Walker Hamster. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the setup of the Foscam FI9831W. This is the 1.3 megapixel camera, so you can get a screen resolution of 1280 by 960. And I'll also be demonstrating this using the Chrome web browser. Previously, I used IE, I also used Safari, so now it's time for Chrome to get a shot. First thing is, remember to screw on the antenna to the back of the Foscam unit. Plug in the power adapter, and also plug in the Ethernet cord so that's connected to your home network. I'll also be using the software I download from the Foscan website, that way everyone can follow these instructions because not all computers have a CD drive. If you don't want to ask to download it from the Foscan website, you could just use a CD that came with this unit. Because on the CD, it also has the IP camera tool software. So to, to get a software from the Foscan website, just head to foscan.us and there's a support link right on top. On the support link, scroll further down, you'll see the CD installation software, IP camera tools. So for this one, I'm using a Chrome uh, Windows computer. So I'm downloading this, and it's downloaded to my download folder. I'm going to extract the zip content, and it has that extracted folder. There's a readme file, but readme file basically just says double click to run it. So I'm going to run this IP camera tool. Yes, run. And it's going to scan my entire network for Foscams. So the one I'm be installing today is the FI9831W. So I'm going to just double click on this, it launched Chrome, because Chrome is my default browser, and on top you'll see that it says plugins are not found, click me to download. So I'm going to just click on this, and on Chrome is asking do I want to download it, yes, and to continue, and it did. So I'm going to head to my download section here, on my computer folder, and I see this plugin.crx, so this is a, the Chrome plugin. And up, up here in the Chrome there's a uh, warning that says, well, a message that says it did not install it because basically it's not a Chrome approved plugin. So to install manually, just go to your Chrome settings and click on the extensions section. Now head back to that folder that has the plugin and you can just click and drag this plugins.crx file and drag it into this Chrome browser and hit add. So now I've added this plugin to the Chrome browser manually. I'll need to close this browser completely and relaunch it in order for the plugin to take effect. And when it's a, once I relaunched it, I don't see that link on top anymore to saying that plugin is not detected. The default username on the Foscan models are admin, and the default password is blank. So I'm going to leave this alone, click login. And now, because the default password is blank, Foscan wants you to change it. Also, the user ID, which is recommended. So I'm going to give it a new username called Mega Man. I'll give it a password and confirm the password and hit modify. Username, password, success. Okay, so now I need to log in with my new username and password. Password and click login. Alright, so here's the Foscam in my living room. Picture quality is pretty darn good. Now, the next thing I want to do is add this camera to my wireless network. So I'm going to hit a settings page, then head to network, and go to wireless settings. So now as it's trying to load, click scan, so scan for my wireless SSID. It found my wireless network. Let's click on it, select it. Over here, just put in my password and hit save. Now that it's saved, I'm going to unplug the file scan from my router and move it to a different room. I'm going to close the browser, refresh this IP camera list, and here is that file scan, the FI9831W. Right now, it's just using the wireless antenna for wireless network. Nothing is plugged in through the Ethernet cord. Now the file scan came up. I'm going to double click on this. Give it my user ID, password, login, and there, there we go. This is it. Basically, most of the setup is done. You can begin using it, but the next few steps are just optional setup that I like to always put in for my cameras. First thing is, I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to the network settings again. And for IP configuration, 
I like to use a static IP address. So I'm going to uncheck, remove the checkbox from here, the obtain IP from DHCP, and I'm going to give it my own static IP of 153. My gateway, which is 192.168.1.1, and the same thing goes for my DNS servers. These numbers are based on your router, so your router can have different number, different IPs. Well, let me just show you how to, to get that here. So, like for example, on a Windows computer, you can just go to open your run command, type in a CMD, go to command prompt. So IP config slash all. So here, if I just scroll up. It tells you you need the IP address of my computer and everything, but also on this line right here, let's mark it, on these lines, it tells me my default gateway. So for my default gateway, my DNS server right here, that's how I get my, uh, my values to populate into this field. And put it in here, and hit save. It's asking if I want to make sure I want to change my IP address because that means when this thing boots back up, it will not be connected through this IP address anymore. It will now be connected to the 192.168.1.153. The camera rebooted. I'm just going to close this again. And on the IP camera tool, it's going to refresh the camera list. All right, I found this new camera, and it's also using the IP of 153 now. So let's double click on this. Now I can log in. Hello. Okay. Now, because this is a 1.3 megapixel camera, I might as well utilize it. So I'm going to go to video, video settings. So the default stream zero is 720p. So I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm going to modify one of the other ones, like stream normal one, for example. I'm going to make this one 960. Uh, keep this as one megabit, thirty frames. Just I'm just used to thirty frames. Hit save and hit back to live video. So this is video stream zero, and let me show you what happens when I switch it to the video stream one. Now you can see more on the top and more on the bottom. So this is the twelve eighty by nine sixty. So it's more of a height. I'll switch it back again. Video stream, this is a 720p. Or currently you don't see Pooh Bear, you barely see the Pooh Bear balloon. Now I'm switch it back to the 960. You can see the Pooh Bear balloon and you can also see almost all of the, the slide, this little toy slide here. Another optional setting that I like to pick is this P to Z, the pan tilt. Well, actually, the startup options here. So I don't like it when it always goes to home on a reset because if I lose a power, I like my Foscan to be pointing at the last spot I set it to. So I'm going to say disable startup. Hit save. One other setting you might want to consider is your user IDs. So under basic settings, your user accounts, you might want to consider adding other accounts so that you're not always using the one as administrator privilege. There's obviously a lot of settings available to the users for on the Foscan. And I'll leave it to you guys to just choose, pick and choose what you want. But as for all the required ones, changing the default user ID and password, adding to your wireless network, and give a static IP, which I think would be very helpful, especially if you do any port forwarding later on. And I think those are more of the required ones or helpful ones. Thanks for watching this setup video of the Foscam FI9831W. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching Walker Hamster. Bye.